Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. We're exploring week three of String, and uh, the voice you're hearing or the captions you're reading comes from me. My name is Kay Slater. I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools, and I am super excited to be exploring this, uh, this third and last week of string with you. In previous weeks, we explored drawing with string. Last week, we did um, painting with and on string. So in previous weeks, we explored drawing with string and painting with and on string. And so for this week three, I thought what we could do is we could explore storytelling with string. And so, um, this is more where uh, string becomes a character or a tool that allows us to tell a story. So before we get started, uh, here are a couple of things that I assembled for us to uh, be playing and exploring string this morning. Do you have some string? And that can be anything. I have some cut up pieces of string that, I, um, that I've used for other projects that I pulled out. I've got some old kite string here that was left over in my uh, art box. I've got my favorite string twine, which I really didn't know was going to be my favorite until I started uh, exploring with it in the previous weeks. I've got some thick, chunky yarn here, and I even have some dental floss. So anything that you find, it could be an old shoelace, uh, it could be some yarn from a project, it could be some rope that you've used to tie around. As long as you've got permission, any string will do. Some paper, um, and I always suggest you grab paper from the recycling bin. Um, it can have uh, grease stains on it. It could have printing on it. It could be ripped. It could be different colors. Pulling things from the recycling bin are great because you already know that somebody's going to throw it out. So you don't have to, you don't have to be precious about it. You can use up as much of it as you want a mark making tool and a mark making tool is anything that can make a mark on a piece of paper. So that could be a pencil, a pen, markers, crayons, pencil crayons, anything you want. When I lead explorers, I typically stick with a black marker because it's easier for you to see uh, because it's nice and thick and there's lots of contrast. Um, on my camera, but you can use whatever mark making tool you want. Scissors. So if you have a really long piece of string and you want to be able to cut up your string, um, some safe scissors for you to use, or if you're making with a grown up so that, so that they can cut with you. But if you don't have scissors, that's okay. There's lots of ways you can explore with it with a single piece um, of string and then some tape if you have some. So you don't have to do this one, but when I was thinking about some of the things that I wanted to explore this morning, I thought some tape might be handy to stick the string onto the page. Um, but this again, this is only if you have some. So if you don't have any scissors or tape, we can totally do this with just string, paper, and mark making tools. Okay, so I thought we would start exploring storytelling with string by looking at something we had already done in a previous week, which was drawing with string. And so when I say drawing with string, the whole idea was that um, if you were to take a piece of paper, oh, here I have a little scrap piece of paper, there we go. If you were gonna uh, draw on a piece of paper, make your line, the line's kind of stuck there. And you could do that same mark with string, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because it's a little bit easier for me, but there you go. So there's the same mark that I made with string, but I can't move this line along the page, but I can move this line. I could move it to the side, so I could just move the shape by itself. I could change the shape without having to erase the page. And so they're both lines, but this gives me the ability to manipulate and I'm not stuck with it which does something really, really cool for us if we're thinking about storytelling. You can tell a story by drawing a picture and people interpret that story by what they see on the page. 
they might decide that this is a, an alien creature because of the shape of the head and it's got one really long shoulder over here. Maybe it's got some funny wings. So maybe it's a, a fairy tale. And so they're, they're reading my picture based on the information that they see. You know what, I'm gonna finish off this funny drawing. Give it an actual bee tail. There we go. <laughs> so there's my funny, my funny person or funny alien bee creature. And so they can tell, or they can read um, what's happening. They can tell a story. There's a narrative that they can figure out by looking at this picture. Same thing with drawing with string. If we were to make a picture, move this a little bit out of the way. Okay, I know what I'm gonna, what story I'm gonna tell. Okay, so there's my line. I drew my line, my picture with my string. And here's my story. This morning I woke up and came down to the kitchen. I was feeling hungry. I don't normally bake things for breakfast. But this morning I decided I would try to make donuts. And so I got out my flour and I got out my eggs and I put everything together and I cooked my donuts. <laughs> I don't actually know how to make donuts. And this is what turned out. And sure, it's a little lopsided, but the frosting turned out okay. And it kind of has the shape of a donut. And then I ate it all up and it was great. <laughs> and do you see the happy, the happy face? And so because I was able to move the line, I was being able to change the picture. So just like with a storybook, as if I had flipped the page over, I was able to change the picture that I showed with my line just by moving the string. So you could build a picture out of however many kinds of different um, kinds of string that you had. And then um, as you tell the story, you can change the picture that, you, that you're telling the story. So what else could I do? Maybe that's some grass. And then, and then how about once upon a time, there was a caterpillar named Pete. Caterpillar was so hungry, or Pete the Caterpillar was so hungry, had been looking everywhere, going back and forth along the park. There were no delicious leaves to be found. And after what felt like a really, really long time, Pete came upon this beautiful tree and struggled up oh, the tree. Oh, two times. And then last time succeeded and made it all the way to the top of the tree and had the best darn lunch of his life. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so now the tree's all small. Right? So, I mean, this was just me responding to the string. I didn't have a story made up. I didn't practice anything. I just played with my string. But you could come up with a story and then pre-cut a bunch of different string or lay it out in a, spe a special way, make a script, and then perform this. You could ask a grown-up um, to film it for you and then you could share it with your friends online. You could take pictures every time you moved the string. So you'd have a series of drawings with your string and then you could write a story to have it beside it. So you could plan this all out in advance. You don't need to, to just respond like I did. I, I did something called improvisation. So I just improv I just responded to what, what I saw. 
Um, but if that's not fun for you, you can get it all set up in advance. So that's one way that we could story tell with string. Next way I thought we could explore it is string as a character. And so we kind of did that with this where I had Pete, Pete the caterpillar here. Um, so this string became a character based on when I looked at this piece of string, I saw kind of a wormy shape. And so I went with it. I decided that that was going to be my shape. But we could also use string as a way to uh, express emotion or to um, activate a character. So string as a character, sure, there's, there's Pete, or if I had my character, or if I push all this to the side, and I just looked at this piece of string by itself, maybe I could come up with a character. I could say, this is Bendy the Pogo, Pogo string, because it's kind of got a spring there. And then I could make up a story about Bendy, Pendy the, the, the Pogo string, right? Or, and here I'm gonna get my paper out. It could also be used to, uh, to animate a character. And so I'm gonna draw a face, a really simple face, but I'm gonna leave out a couple of things uh, off of this face. I'm gonna put some ears because ears don't usually move. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put some eyes, but I'm not gonna put any eyelids. You know what, I'm not gonna put any pupils either. The little uh, black dots in the eyes. I am gonna put a really nice nose because noses don't usually move. You might be really good at, uh, at moving your nose around, but uh, I'm gonna pretend like this nose doesn't move around so much. And that's all I'm gonna do right now. Actually, maybe I'll do some hair. Hair doesn't usually move around that much either. There you go. There is my character. And you know what, just because it's fun, I'm gonna add a mustache. There we go. Everybody likes mustaches, right? I wish I had a cool mustache like this. All right, so there's my, there's my mustache. A little bit more. <laughs> you don't have to have a mustache on yours. I just really felt like a mustache this morning. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to take some of our string and we're gonna build in the rest of the pieces that we didn't, we didn't draw. And so I'm going to give this character some eyebrows. I'm gonna do some really small pieces of the yarn for the iris of the eyes. Kind of blobby on this one, that's fine. Well, you know what, I'm gonna do another one. Is that any better? Oh, they're both kind of blobby. You know what, I'll just go with two blobby ones then. There you go. Perfect, okay? And then uh, maybe I'll use, so you know what? I really, I'm, I'm really liking this, uh, this yarn. So I'm gonna just stick with this yarn for now. I'm gonna put a mouth there. Do I want that mouth? Ah, oh, it's a little thick. I think, I think I do want a piece of string. I'm gonna use this piece of string. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna use this piece of string for my mouth. <laughs> there we go. And finished. All right, so I've got uh, I've got my character here. And so now what I can do, oh, you know what? I said I was gonna do one more thing. I said I was gonna do some um, eyelids. So I'm gonna take some of my kite string, just so we got a whole bunch of different kinds of string here. Give this character a bit of a sleepy look. There we go. So there's my character. So now we tell a story. And uh, I'm going to pick a really simple one right now. I'm going to tell the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. My character is happy with that. So I'm going to make a smile. This is a story of Goldilocks and the three bears. 
fix the string because this is my character and I can I can stop to do that. <laughs> it's kind of a kinky piece of string. It doesn't, doesn't really want to listen to me. There we go. Great. Okay, Goldilocks and the three bears. So once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She went walking in the woods and all of a sudden, uh, after walking for a while, she found a house. And Goldilocks was the kind of person who didn't wait to be invited in and just went and opened the door. What? Eyebrows up. We're so surprised. That's so rude. Goldilocks goes into the house uninvited, and goes right up to the kitchen table where there are three bowls of porridge sitting there. And Goldilocks looks, oh, actually, I'm going to keep it like that. We're still surprised. What? Goldilocks looks at the biggest bowl, grabs the spoon, and eats it. Now we're kind of frustrated. What? Goldilocks, what are you doing? No, that's not okay. But Goldilocks, um, after taking a bite, goes, ugh, that's too cold. Serves Goldilocks right eating other people's food. Then Goldilocks goes to the second bowl. What? And eats it too, but it's ooh, too hot. Ouch. Oh, I don't like it. When, when things are really hot, burn my mouth. Ouch. But then Goldilocks takes a bite out of the third bowl and it's just right. Okay. Wow. I don't really like that Goldilocks is eating somebody else's porridge, but I do like it. The porridge is just right. And there you go. So you could tell a story and you could have this character be the one that narrates. I kind of made it so that it was an expression of me, um, my, uh, Kay, listening to the story and reacting with this face. You could play this with a friend or with another grown up um, or a classmate or a sibling where you tell a story and they do the responses on the face, maybe you could see if you could make each other laugh or, or, you know, just, you could have multiple characters. You could have the different characters of the story and then you change each of their faces depending on whether or not they're talking or how they're reacting. Maybe they're crying. Just caught that idea. Oh, so sad. I kind of make a crying face like this. Oh, kind of sad, maybe. Oh, it's down like that. And then, hoo, 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 hoo. Crying. Woo hoo. I think it has to come down like this a little bit more. Sad, sad, sad. <laughs> right? So you could have the different faces and you could respond like that. So you could have the string be a character, just like that. Or you could add the string to a character's face or their body. Um, and move them around. Have you ever seen um, puppets before using string? Let's move this face over to the side. Let's make a really, really simple puppet. You can have really complicated, complicated puppets. You could have puppets that have three dimensions. Um, so like, a, oh, you could grab a toy, like a ready-made, um, an action figure, a teddy bear, and you could put string on the arms and the legs or the mouth, and you could move the your toy around using the strings like a puppet. You could get a roll of toilet paper, and you could draw, and then you could use some string. Actually, you know what, before I even do this, I've got my little gallery pal here. I'm going to take a piece of string, and if you had, uh, if you had the tape, you can do that. I do have tape here, but this was what my gallery pal was standing on. So I'm going to just use the bowl clip, but there you go. So you can't see the, the, the side here, but if anybody was looking um, at the side of the character, they would see the character move around. And so you could have multiple of the little toilet paper characters. Hello there. Hello there. Oh yeah. You could use your finger, right? And so you could make a whole story using um, a ready-made or a, um, a creature that you make out of the toilet paper roll. Put my hat back on, it's winter time, it's cold. Okay, but I said that we could just draw one. And this is the fastest way. If we've got some 
some string hanging around. It can be really, really simple. It does not have to be fancy, especially as we're just practicing and playing. We just want to see what happens when we do these things. And so I'm going to take my pencil and poke a little hole at the top of the page. And by little, I made a pretty big hole. There you go. That's going to be easy for me to stick a piece of uh, string through. And there we go. And now we have a puppet, right? Really simple puppet. Oh yeah, I could draw it on both sides so that if it walked back and forth, kind of did the work for me. There we go. And so there. So as I walk the character around, if you were looking this way, you could have characters come up beside it. You could sit it flat as well and move them back and forth like this. They kind of stand on the side, and if you have uh, an obvious bottom to it, unless they're flying, maybe or swimming, that yeah, you can you can add string to your character, and then you can add motion. So as we continue to explore motion, I thought uh, we would do one last activity with string, where uh, we consider how string is used in, say, the theater. So if you've ever been to the ballet or you've been to a play um, or even a school auditorium that has um, curtains um, at the stage, you'll know that, or maybe you've never seen backstage, but usually curtains are drawn or closed or open by using strings. So pulleys and weights. And so strings are, are an important way for characters to be able to be raised up or for uh, scenery to come up and down on a stage. And so I thought we would use some of our paper and we would build our own stage. And then we would use some string to be able to move some things around on a piece of paper. So this is a multimedia way that we could use string to um, add motion to our little our little play here. So I'm going to draw some curtains on the front here. If you have different colors, maybe you could you could color them red. Or you could pretend like this is a storybook and these are the, the, the pages that open up at the front. I just decided to do a um, curtain because that's what I said first. Okay, so I want the curtains to be able to open up like this. And so because we're exploring with string, I think what I'm going to do is add some holes again. You could just flip them open with your hands. You don't have to have string, but because we're exploring with string, I want to see how many different ways I can incorporate or use string when I'm, when I'm exploring this morning. All right, perfect, there's one. It doesn't have to be great, it doesn't have to be tied real close because again, we're just practicing, just trying things out. Do I have a longer piece? I'll use this piece. I'm not even using the same kind of string on both sides, and that's okay too. They're not the same length, they're not necessarily the same color. Just, just seeing what happens when we try this doesn't have to be for keeps, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to match. Okay, so there we go. Da, da, da. Okay, so the curtain's open. So we've got the string there. Oh, this one didn't tie very well. I'm going to do it one more time. So that's what I learned. Kite string does not tie really great, but the cotton string ties really easy. Okay, so then I have my stage on the inside. So I'm going to draw a floor and you can draw whatever you want on your stage or whatever you want inside uh, your curtains. But there you go. There's my, my floor area. And then maybe the curtains come along here, but they're all drawn back now. There we go. 
So this is what it looks like when the curtains are all pulled back. And now we've got our stage. And I think what I want is I want to have a bunch of different dancers here. And I want the sun to rise. I think that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take one of my pieces of paper and I'm gonna rip it up because every opportunity I have to rip paper, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> there we go. Hooray! I do love to rip paper. Okay. So this is where I want to have my dancers be. And so I'm going to draw my dancers. Legs up, all in a row. And then I think I'm gonna have some other dancers that are gonna be behind them. And you can use your scissors if you want to cut the paper, but as you, if you've ever made with me before, you know I really love to have any excuse to uh, cut paper. And I'm just using stick people because it doesn't have to be fancy, but if I was making this for keeps at the end, like maybe I really like this and then I do actually want to do a performance, then maybe I would, um, I would draw something really complicated um, and uh, detailed. But for exploring and prototyping, stick people are great because you can just kind of imply that they are people um, that are on the page without having to really go into too much detail. Okay, so I've made my little holes there. I've made my dancers. Oh, and I wanted to have a sun. I wanted to have a sun that rises. So I'm going to have a sun like this. And is that big enough? Okay, I'm going to rip this down a little bit. You'll see what I'm trying to do here in just a second. I want this sun to be able to fit. There we go, in there. So I'm going to stick that onto my page. I'm going to use some tape. It doesn't matter that my tape is a different color because, again, nothing is for keeps. We're just trying this out. You know what? I actually feel like that might be too big. I think I want it to be about half size. There we go. Okay. You can change your mind as you're making. That's totally fine. You're the one who's who's trying, right? Nobody else can tell you how to uh, explore. That's up to you. Okay, so that's where the sun is going to rise from. There we go. Great. Now I need to add my string to this again. So I'm basically making a bunch of puppets by uh, by doing these um, these different characters that are going to move around the stage, right? But I'm using string to animate them. Okay, I'm gonna tie off my little string, or my little sun. There we go. I'm gonna put my sun on the stage, get it all ready. This is all the back, behind the scenes things before the audience ever sits down. This is the stuff that you get to, you get to decide because you're directing, you're directing this, this, uh, this dance. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm gonna thread. So you, you saw that I, I poked two holes in these dancers here. You can just do one side, but if I do two like this, what I can do is I can thread my string through my kite string, it's really unraveled here. So I'm going to try and use my pencil to stuff it through the hole. Does that work? All right. Yes, it does. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I threaded it through this way, and then I'm going to bring it through the back, and then I'm going to bring it through on this side. And again, I think I need, I need my pencil to help me push this through the hole. Well, what I learned today was that kite string is very difficult 
because it just really wants to unravel. And then that's something I learned today. Okay, so do you see? I brought it through um, on this side and it came out through the other side. And so now I have uh, a length of string on both sides. And I'm going to do the same thing to this piece over here. I think I need another piece of string. And luckily, I have more kite string right here. Cut off a little bit more. Okay. Oh, and now that it's freshly cut, probably go through the hole better. Yay, all right, great. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Hopefully before the string frays too much. Oh, no can do, it's already frayed a lot. There we go. I'm all tangled up, but there we go. Okay, so now I have my dancers there and I want them to move back and forth across the page. So that means that I have to create some holes in the paper. There we go. So these are these are the dancers that are going to go from behind. I've strung it through on that side. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. And if you find that your string is really frustrating, the string you're working with, and you can find another option, go ahead and change it. This is just a prototype. We're just trying something out. It doesn't have to be for keeps. So if you start with one piece of string and it doesn't work and you need to switch to um, floss or twine or whatever, go for it. And then when you make your final project, if, you, if this is something you really like and you do actually want to make something for keeps after you've explored with it, then you can make or you can use some you can use the string that actually works so you figure out the floss is really good so then you can make sure that you get some floss for your final project if cotton string is what you want to use then that's great but for this even if it doesn't work out great you, you can be experimenting as you go along okay so here we go i've got my dancers i've got my son and let's start Let's start my little dance performance. I'm going to push things over to the side so everything's everything you can you can see all the pieces. I'm going to close the curtains. I'm going to ask the audience to sit down. I'm going to say, Grandma, Grandpa, hey, foster parents, hey, best friend who's in my bubble, who's also in my class, could you have a seat? I have something to share with you. Or if you're old enough or you have permission and you're doing a video of this, you could go, hey, whoever's watching, welcome to my show. And the curtains are going to rise. Do, 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 do. If you want to, you could play some music. This is where the tape part, if you had tape again, you don't have to. You could just have it up like this, but you could also tape down your string over here. So that it sits a little bit more flat. There we go. And then the music starts. And then the dancers get into position. And then the sun begins to rise. And then the dancer, the music starts, and then the dancers go start to dance. Grab the string over here. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> you can have a motion picture, right? Just by the string that you have planned out on the page. Sun gets higher, comes over to this part of the, the stage, and the dancers just keep dancing. And you could make this really, really complicated. You could have lots and lots of characters that move around. 
You could have two characters that are having a conversation and they're walking back and forth. You could have a chase scene where there's a bear and a bunch of people and they're chasing each other back and forth. You can create whatever story you would want to and use the string to help you create the story. These are just a couple of different ways that you can be storytelling with string. You could uh, tell a story by weaving. You could, um, you could make a picture using all of your string by weaving and creating a, a tapestry or a blanket, or um, you could use embroidery where you um, put uh, pictures into fabric by stitching them. Um, there are languages where um, knots on a string tell information and tell stories. You can come up with a whole bunch of different ways all on your own of how to tell, story, tell your stories using the string that you have. But these are just a couple of ways to get you started. Thanks so much for exploring with me today. If you're still making, there's no need to stop just because my video is finished. I encourage you to keep making. If this got you really excited and you want to keep exploring string, you can go back and check out our videos from the past two weeks and keep making with string. If you want to keep making, we have all of our videos all the way back to when we first started uh, last year. And so there's, there's more than, uh, I think, 10 sessions that you can check out. Um, and you can find all of those videos on Facebook, YouTube, or on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. So I'm going to leave my video running a little bit longer because uh, we always want to practice respect by cleaning up our space at the end. And all of this is going to be uh, thrown away because nothing is for keeps. Um, for me, because I want to be able to put the paper back in the recycling bin, I'm going to pull the string out of all of the things that I was prototyping because string doesn't go into the recycling bin. String either gets collected so you can use it for another project and you could put it in a bag and save it for another project or it gets thrown out. But paper can be put into the recycling bin and so I want to make sure I separate those before I'm done. Okay, so thanks again so much for making with me. Uh, I'm going to finish cleaning up and I will see you online soon. If you have time next Saturday, we have a really great performer who's going to be joining us. Um, so you can catch us online on Saturdays at 11 a.m. on Facebook. See you soon. <laughs>